In part one of the uh, K-factor design method video, uh, we looked at the um, uh, the basic uh, K-factor approach and uh, the three types of controllers and uh, we completed the design of type 1 controller. Uh, in this part 2, we will take up the design of type 2 and the type 3, which are the two more widely used uh, um, controller types in uh, in DC-DC converter applications. So here is the uh, uh, transfer function of type 2 controller. It has the uh, KC over S term as in type 1. Uh, in addition, it has uh, one zero at omega z and a four at omega p. The uh, Bode plot for just the type two controller alone is uh, shown here. In the magnitude plot, it uh, initially before this zero location, it comes down at uh, minus twenty dB per decade. The zero makes it uh, adds another plus twenty dB per decade slope, so make it um, flat zero dB uh, slope, um, and um, the pole eventually adds another minus 20 dB and uh, at a high frequency the magnitude comes down at a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. If you look at the phase plot uh, at low frequencies well below omega z the phase angle is um, minus 90 degrees and um, the zero tries to bring it up uh, towards uh, um, tries to add a 90 degrees to tries to bring it towards zero degrees but before it can actually reach zero the effect of the follow on pole uh, also comes into play and the um, phase again drops back and at high frequencies it is back to minus 90 degrees. So the entire concept of uh, k-factor method is to make sure that uh, so we know that this pole zero pair provides uh, a phase boost so the k-factor method concept is to make sure that the maximum boost you can see it keeps increasing reaches the peak at this point so we want to make sure that this maximum boost occurs exactly at the crossover frequency so that we get the uh, we can achieve the phase margin uh, easily so uh, we can we can prove that the maximum boost for a pole zero pair occurs mm -hmm. exactly at the geometric mean of omega z and omega p uh, it's uh, it's actually easy to prove even though we will not do it here so all you have to do is uh, uh, essentially write the angle of um, we are only considering the pole and zero uh, of this transfer function, not the integrator. So write the angle of the uh, numerator, so that would be arc tan of um, um, j omega over um, arc tan of omega over omega z, and um, uh, minus arc tan of uh, omega over omega p. That would be the angle um, contributed by this pole zero pair. Then um, uh, take its derivative with respect to omega equate that to zero to find the maximum point. Then we can show that the uh, maximum occurs exactly at the geometric mean. So what do we mean by geometric mean? Okay. means that uh, omega c, um, this geometric mean, um, uh, is equal to square root of the product omega z times omega p. Okay. Uh, so once um, we agree upon that, then we can choose the omega z and omega p as, uh, as shown here. So omega z, the zero location, would be the crossover frequency divided by this k. So this is the k factor which gives a name to this method, the k factor method. And uh, omega p, the pole location, would be at k times omega c. Okay. So again, if you multiply both sides, so this uh, comes out to be omega z times omega p. And on this side, the k is cancelled and you have omega c squared. So once again, clearly you can see that omega c is exactly at the uh, geometric mean of omega z times uh, omega p. Then the question is, uh, how do you select this uh, value of k? Okay. okay, so I show this uh, phase plot as an uh, illustrative example. So what is shown here is uh, actually two pairs of uh, pole zero locations. The first one uh, corresponding to this uh, green um, uh, plot, um, green plot here. So that corresponds to a pole location, um, sorry, a zero location at 10 hertz. Okay, this is omega z, uh, one let's say and uh, 10,000 is the omega p one, the pole location of the first pair. Okay. And uh, the second one corresponding to the uh, the red plot here, um, that also has a, a, a zero pole pair, but the zero is at 100 hertz, okay. that's uh, omega z two, let's say, and the pole is at uh, 1,000 hertz. Okay. So notice that in both cases, um, the uh, geometric mean is exactly this value 316.35 um, hertz okay, so so this is um, uh, square root of uh, 10 
times uh, 10,000 okay and uh, so this one is uh, square root of um, 100 times 1000 okay. so they are both same and equal to 316.35 okay. so the main point I want to show in this uh, example is that um, as you shift the um, zero and pole further apart resulting in the same geometric mean as is as done in the case of the green plot you get higher phase boost so the phase boost here is um, closer to um, uh, the maximum possible is 90 degrees so this is about 86 uh, degrees whereas if the um, uh, pole and zero are closer to each other for the same geometric mean you get lower phase boost as in this case it is 54 degrees so that gives us a way of determining this uh, this k, which uh, essentially is nothing but uh, is a measure of the separation between omega z and omega p for the same value of um, geometric mean, which uh, which is where the omega c would be uh, um, chosen. Um, so obviously, if you want uh, a larger phase boost, you're going to have a larger value of k and larger separation of the zero and pole. So that is the concept. Okay, so then uh, can we actually come up with uh, with an equation that relates the um, uh, the required k factor value to the phase boost um, uh, that we are looking for? Okay, so it is it is easy to do. Uh, so just derive what is the phase boost provided by the pole zero pair, which is nothing but the phase angle of the zero or the numerator minus the phase angle provided by the the pole on the on the denominator. So the phase angle for the numerator is uh, arc tan of the imaginary part which is uh, omega c or omega z minus the um, uh, arc tan um, on the on the denominator side arc tan of uh, this imaginary part here which would be omega c or omega p now from our definition of uh, this omega z um, k and omega p which is given here uh, clearly uh, omega c divided by omega z is k and uh, omega c divided by omega p is uh, um, 1 over k okay. so we'll uh, go ahead and use that here um, so this would be uh, arc tan of k uh, and this term will be minus arc tan of 1 over k okay. now there is a trigonometric identity uh, as shown here which is uh, arc tan of x plus arc tan of 1 over x is uh, 90 degrees okay. so use that uh, uh, in this expression for phi boost so we get phi boost to be uh, so for example if you um, you can write this minus tan inverse of 1 over uh, k from this expression as, um, as tan uh, in arc tan of k minus 90 degrees okay? that comes from this expression okay so then this complete expression then becomes um, um, arc tan of k plus arc tan of k minus 90 degrees which is uh, this 2 uh, tan inverse k minus 90 degrees okay so therefore the uh, k can be obtained as uh, so this would be um, phi boost plus 90 tan of that uh, um, sorry, phi boost plus 90 divided by 2 tan of that is k okay? so k is tan of phi boost um, um, over 2 plus 90 over 2 is 45 degrees okay? so that is the required expression for k and since we already know uh, the phase boost required uh, from the previous uh, equation that we studied uh, we can calculate k and once we know k then uh, and also knowing omega c we can calculate the omega z zero location and omega p okay then the step-by-step uh, -step, uh, design method involves uh, these steps uh, start with determining the uh, phase of the plant uh, phi system at the required crossover frequency omega z and we can obtain that from the analytical transfer function or from simulation so once we have the phi system use that to calculate the phase boost required in step 2 and this is the equation for the phase boost where pm is the the desired phase margin okay. uh, for example 60 degrees so once you know the phase boost then uh, actually you can go ahead and select which type you need uh, if it is more than 90 degrees you would use uh, uh, type 3 if it is 0 to 90 degrees use type 2 okay. um, so in uh, so we are dealing with uh, type 2 design right now so let's assume our required phase boost is between 0 and 90 degrees okay. then use the uh, in step 3 use the expression that we just now derived for k uh, so it's tan of uh, phi boost over 2 plus 45 degrees okay. once you know k omega z is um, a crossover frequency over k and omega p is k times the crossover frequency okay so then uh, for type 2 we needed uh, 
to design three parameters. One is the uh, omega z, omega p. Now we have done that. The last remaining parameter is that constant uh, uh, kc, uppercase k suffix c. Okay. So that we have to choose to make sure that the complete loop gain um, becomes exactly 1, 0 dB at omega c. Um, so the suggested procedure for that is uh, obtain the magnitude of the overall loop gain. So now that includes the um, plant transfer function and the controller transfer function. But since we do not know the Kc in the controller yet, just keep it as 1, calculate the complete magnitude, then um, 1 over that, okay, so uh, inverse, of K, inverse of that magnitude, 1 over that um, gain should be equal to Kc so that when you add Kc then the overall gain at omega c becomes exactly 1. Okay. So uh, as an expression this is the value of Kc where uh, where uh, everything inside this magnitude uh, uh, symbol is the uh, uh, is again obtained from step 4. Okay. So um, um, uh, this this whole thing 1 over j omega c and this uh, 0 and pole uh, they are from the controller and this is the uh, complete gain of the plant at uh, omega c. Okay. Um, so calculate that, uh, 1 over that is the uh, is this constant gain kc. Now we can do this from the transfer function if you happen to know it or we can use simulation uh, where we can actually get this entire magnitude from uh, from the body plot of the system with the controller um, uh, included but kc kept as 1. So, and then we'll get some, um, some dB, 1 over that would give you the uh, Kc. Okay, so that completes the design using type 2 controller. And that is, um, um, uh, that's probably all that you would need for um, um, a buck converter with its voltage loop, um, uh, current loop controller. Uh, and also in some of the other uh, boost, buck boost converters uh, as well. Okay, so for the type 3 controller, uh, here is the uh, transfer function. Uh, now we have uh, two zeros at the same location, uh, omega z, and two poles at uh, uh, same but different from the zero uh, locations, omega p. Okay. Uh, so the look at the uh, magnitude body plot. So initial slope is um, minus 20 dB per decade as in all the other controllers, but the presence of two zeros um, add a plus 40 dB so it actually goes up at plus 20 dB per decade and then uh, ev eventually the two poles add another minus 40 dB so that you're coming down at minus 20 dB uh, at high frequencies. Okay. Uh, more importantly the uh, phase plot um, starts with um, um, minus 90 degrees corresponding to the integrator and uh, the two zeros tend to take it up towards plus 90 degrees um, an addition of 180 degrees but before it can do so, uh, do so, depending on the location of the pole, um, the pole begins to have influence and uh, brings it down uh, by a total of 180 degrees for the two poles, so that um, uh, eventually at very high frequencies, we are left with uh, the same minus 90. The two poles and two zeros, their phase uh, contributions uh, cancel each other. Okay. So as uh, in the case of um, the type two controller, here also, um, uh, it's, it's, it's very similar to type 2 just that instead of having one zero pole pair we have two of them but at the same location so if the type 2 produced a um, certain amount of phase boost this is going to produce the same uh, it's going to produce twice the uh, phase boost um, and uh, uh, once again at the uh, geometric mean uh, because that is where the maximum phase boost would, would occur so the uh, descent procedure is uh, almost identical we would uh, uh, define our omega z as uh, the crossover omega c over k and omega p as uh, k times omega c so that we are guaranteed the um, phase boost uh, occurs uh, exactly at omega c which is placed at the geometric mean. So this is the equation that we derived for the type 2 for the phase boost created by that uh, single pole 0 pair. Uh, so that was 2 octane of k minus 90 degrees. And uh, as I mentioned, for type 3, where we have two pole zero pairs, um, the expected phase boost is exactly twice that of what we got in type 2. So the phi boost for a type 3 controller would be 4 um, r tan of k uh, minus uh, 2 times 90 degrees uh, minus 180 degrees. 
So that gives us the uh, the final expression for the k factor k in a type 3 controller and that turns out to be um, so divide this by uh, um, so 5 boost minus plus 180 divided by 4 um, tan of that is k okay? so k is tan 5 boost over 4 plus 45 degrees um, other than that uh, other than this particular expression uh, the, the the steps many of the equations are uh, identical to what we did for uh, type 2 uh, controller so um, so you will go with start with the, uh, determining the phase of the system phase of the plant uh, calculate the five boost required decide the type 1 2 or 3 controller and we are talking about type 3 type 3 controller here use the new expression that we derived for k for a type 3 uh, where we had this would be 5 boost or 4 and this and, uh, and this was uh, thing still 45 degrees um, so obtain the k use uh, these two equations to get the zero and the pole locations just that your, in your controller we'll have two poles and two zeros um, two and the final remaining parameter is um, the constant uh, uppercase kc and the procedure is exactly the same you choose kc so that the overall loop gain exactly at omega c is equal to one so the procedure is the same uh, just that the this will be square this will be square and so on